KXVS on 92.1. Coming soon. This broadcast will start in 60 seconds. This broadcast will start in 45 seconds. This broadcast will start in 30 seconds. This broadcast will start in 15 seconds. This broadcast will start in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, Two, one. The Voice of Stockton. For more information on The Voice of Stockton, go to thevoiceofstockton.org. The views and opinions expressed in the following program do not necessarily reflect those of KXVS, The Voice of Stockton, or its parents, affiliates, management, and staff. Da 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 sha ba di da do da 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 sha da ba da di da 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 sha da la da di da do da 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 sha da ba da di da 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 sha da ba da bi da do da 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 sha da ba da bi da 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 ee sha da ba da di da sha tu ba is good. It's time for Kitchen Conversations with Chef Tobias Cooks. Here's Chef Cooks. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Yes, good morning, Chef Tobias Cooks with Kitchen Conversation. I am here Thursday morning. I am excited to be here. How you doing, Dustin? I'm doing good. How about you, yes, Chef? Yes, great day today. Okay, so look, we're still in the summertime. Mm-hmm. We're we're uh, the, it kind of cooled down a little bit, just a little bit, right? I still have my um, fan on at yeah. home, so <laughs> it's kind of warm in the day and it cools in the afternoon. Mm-hmm. But being with that said, today's show is cold summer soups and salads Mm -hmm. yes so just because it's hot outside or if it's warm outside you don't want to turn on your oven you don't want to cook you get a little lazy chef tobias cooks got you covered all right so it's going to be a quick show it's going to be a fun show let's get into it right yes let's get into it. all right so the first thing we're going to do is i have a great red wine here now you don't say i'm not going to be really picky picky about the wine but um Let's just say it's a good red wine. Wow. Yeah, that's a good wine, right? So, for all of my wineries that are out there, we are in the land of wineries with Lodi and... um, Uh, Livermore, some great wines. We're not too far from Napa and Santa Rosa and Sonoma. I love Sonoma. (laughs) Me too. And Monterey. We're not too far from Monterey either. So, shout out to your girl, Chef Tobias Cooks. If you want me to uh, showcase your wine or if you want to come on and showcase your wine, I could do a little pairing with it. If you look on my page, Chef Tobias Cooks, you'll see all my wine demonstrations um, as well. Uh, last time I went out to Santa Rosa, mm-hmm. it was about 16 wineries there and I did cannolis. Wow. <laughs> cannolis and wine. That's an interesting pairing. <laughs> yeah. So today we have red wine. Uh, Dustin, are you okay with wine? Yeah, I'm okay with wine. Okay. So I have the the wine glasses, the mm-hmm. big ones, like the big, 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 big ones. Guess reason why I have that is because today I'm going to show you how to make a quick sangria. What? I forgot to put that in the comments. We'll fix it later. <laughs> yeah. Fix them post. So we're just going to do a really quick sangria. There's all kinds of ways that you could do a sangria. If people don't know what a sangria is, what is it real quick? A sangria. That is a good question. I know, right? I come up with some of these sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> So a sangria preferably is a red wine, uh, and it's mixed fruit. It's pretty much whatever fruit is available. Traditionally, it's oranges. I've had some with the uh, cherries, with those red Mm. cherries, uh, pears before, grapes. Mm. And what you do is you put all your fruits of your choice together, and then you put it in your wine glass, and then you pour the wine on top. Wow. But 
if you want to get a little dangerous, you can mix it with distill, your distill alcohol. So you could do rum, you could do vodka, but we're not going to do that. Today. No, we're not. No. Okay. <laughs> okay, so don't tease me. You, you don't know, wanna... I love my Ziploc bags. <laughs> you don't want to turn up, Dustin. Yeah. Yes. So, Dustin, one day you're going to sing your commercial with Ziploc uh -huh. bags. So, Ziploc, if you're listening, I can see you doing your girl. dance on the Ziploc yeah. commercial. Like. <laughs> I guess. So, what I have here, oranges are pretty good uh, year-round. Oranges are pretty good year-round. Limes are pretty good year-round. Grapes are pretty good year-round. Usually, these are fall or winter. Um, if you want, you could pick up a jar of Martecito, uh red cherries. Those are great as well. So, what I did is I took some oranges. Wash your fruit first, please. So, I just uh, cubed up some oranges beautifully. Cubed up some limes and some green grapes. I put them in a bag. I put a little sugar. Just a little sugar, just so that it could bring out the sweetness of it and it won't be so tart, okay? And then I put them in a Ziploc bag. You could do it overnight or you could do it a couple hours before your event start. And then um, after that, mm, look how that smell. <laughs> no, knock you out. Yes, it smells so good. So then after that, all you want to do is just add the fruit mixture. So this is a citrus mixture. Like I said, you can do pears, you can do grapes, um, you can look up different recipes, you can mix it with vodka or want, uh, rum or whatever else you would like to do. I would not do it with brown liquor. Mm -hmm. I will only do it, if you're going to do a distilled liquor, it will have to be with a wine. If you want to do a brown liquor, then that's a whole nother show. <laughs> <laughs> That's the after hour show, right? <laughs> and then we could talk about that. All right, and look, and I have some of this beautiful juice mm -hmm. here at the bottom. Look at that. Oh, my goodness. Look how good that is. So I have some beautiful um, juice at the bottom. If you can get the juice, uh, you could take the juice and put it in here as well. It's wonderful. Trust me. So anyway, I'm not going to fill it all the way up with fruit. I'm just going to do a little bit with fruit, just a tiny bit. And your leftover fruit, if you have leftover fruit, you know what you could do? Put them in your mm -hmm. ice cube trays and freeze them. Put them in the ice cube trays, freeze them, and then you can use it another time. All right, thank you, Dustin, for opening up the wine for no, me. You did most of the wine. <laughs> I was trying to give you credit. I know. All right, so we... Oh, so, actually, when you open up your wine, especially if you have a really good wine, I usually cook with all of my wine. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. What's the best wine to cook with? Any what, kind? Any kind. Okay. Any kind of wine. Yeah. I mean, obviously, you don't want to cook with like a $70, $80 bottle of wine, you know. Yeah. But wine, I, I usually just cook with my wine. But if you open up a bottle of wine, we're going we to have to have a wine, a wine Somalia on here. Yeah. You teach us about wine. But open up your wine. Let it breathe a little bit. Mm -hmm. So I just open this. <laughs> <laughs> but at least let it breathe a couple hours uh, before your event. Also, uh, yeah, we're going to have to have some. Oh, look at this. Look at this. Is there, uh, um, where is the camera? Oh, yeah, see? So see me fill it up just like this? Look at that. Ugh. And if you want it to be sparkly, you can add a little club soda mm -hmm. to it as well. And that will give it a really great this so look i didn't fill it up quite all the way because these are very very big glasses mm -hmm. and it could take up your entire bottle of wine <laughs> and then you won't have seconds okay so the reason why i started with my sangria see look at this oh mm -hmm. that is such a beautiful wine is that not mm -hmm. what's wrong what happened nope. uh oh that is such a beautiful wine mm -hmm. it really is i'm you gonna get smell some it too I'm going to get some pictures of this. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to get some pictures of this here. So you can see how beautiful this looks. Oh my goodness. And the wine. Mm -hmm. Look at the wine. It's, it's just gorgeous. So anyway, the idea is to make these and let them sit for a bit. Um, some people, they if, if some parties, it depends. You can make a really big one. You can make like a big jug of sangria. <laughs> 
<laughs> and then put it to the side and people could serve themselves. But for today's show, we went ahead and reported it and we're going to let that sit and marinate with the fruit and kind of a little sugar and kind of do its thing, right? Mm -hmm. All right. So the next thing we're going to go into is I'm really excited about this soup. This is actually one of my favorite soups to do. Did you know? Gabacha. Gazbacha. <laughs> Gazbacha. Yeah, I think that's how you pronounce it. Yes, gazbacha. <laughs> this is actually one of my favorite soups. Uh, I'm, I actually learned how to make this soup um, when I was in culinary school. Um, I had never heard of the soup before. And when we started to make it in culinary school, uh, school I said, oh my God, this soup looks familiar. <laughs> So, since then, I have been making gazbacha. So, it's in the comments on how to spell it. It's a Spanish soup. It's normally made cold, and it's wonderful for the summer. Yes, yeah, so the first thing you do is look on Google for the recipe. <laughs> because the beginning of the recipe, it can get a little complicated. I assure you it's easy. But what you want to do is chop up a lot of tomatoes. I use different tomatoes. I use the Roman tomatoes. I use the hot um, house tomatoes. I use the heirloom tomatoes, and I chop them all up. Mm -hmm. Well, what you could do is you could you could flash boil it first, take it out, and then get the skin off of it, and then chop it up real good. Put it in a bowl. Um, and then when you put it in a bowl, you could put it in the refrigerator. You could let it sit overnight. Um, and then when you take it out, you want to add. You can add uh, your onions to it, your bell peppers to it. Um, you can add uh, your salt, your pepper to it. You can add uh, red wine to it, and then put it back in the refrigerator and let it marinate again. And when you do that, this is what you get. Oh. My Ziploc bag. I don't care. Huh? <laughs> yes. A lot of people say it looks like salsa, and it does. It does. It does. But this is all what you could get. And you could put you could put all kinds of goodness in it. Like it's unlimited of, of goodness that you can put in it. Um, and if you're not careful, it could taste a little bit like salsa. Uh, where's my... Oh, here it is. Nope. Trying to find my camera. Trying to find my camera. <laughs> uh. Oh, see, look. Now you can see what it really, 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 really looked like. Look at that. Mm. Oh, how good and delicious that is. All right. So... I'm going to go ahead and put that in my Pyrex. Look at this. You can smell it, huh? Mm, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Oh, that smells divine. Just divine. Okay. Oh, it does kind of smell like a salsa. Yeah, it does, huh? To Americans, it does. Yeah. But, of course, if you're yeah. in Spain and Italy, yeah. you know. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, look at here. We have the basis of it. Again, it is tomatoes. Like I said, hot water. Little... I'm looking at you. Hot <laughs> water. A little salt. Put your tomatoes in. Take them out. The skin is off. Chop them up real good. How long... Put everything in a ball. Let it marinate. How long does it usually take? Uh, it could take about a day or two days to make it nice. because you really want to marinate mm -hmm. the tomatoes yeah. and then you could cube your uh, onions or you could cube your celery, whatever it is that you want to put in it. So that's why I say check the recipe, go to Google, gazpacho, check the recipe, find a recipe. Okay. So then after I do all that, then guess what I have? I have some English cucumbers. Mm. Yes, and the reason why I like the English cucumbers, not because they're really cute and they come like in a little plastic, they're wrapped in this own little plastic, but I like the English cucumbers is because they have a nice bite and they have a nice snap. If you could get the baby cucumbers, that will work just as well. All right, so look, we're going to put the cucumbers in here. Look at this, and it's just going to give it some freshness and some brightness. Ah, yes. And so I cube the tomato, I cube my cucumber bite size. We want it bite size. The next thing I'm going to do and build it is what? Red bell peppers. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> Even though I have red bell peppers in the base of it, mm -hmm. I still like the bite of red bell pepper. So let's go ahead and add, look, at, look how that, see my mm -hmm. nice skills. Now I got to brag, right? <laughs> yes. And look how good that smells. Mm, oh, fresh yes all right so we have that now all you want to do here 
It's do one of my favorite. You can add a little salt and pepper to this if you like. I prefer if you if you uh, salt it in the beginning of it when marinate. Mm -hmm. That way you could get the consistency yep. of the flavor. I keep hot sauce in my purse. Yes, I keep hot sauce in my purse. And this, of course, is the Tabasco, right? Yes, so you could use hot sauce. I like Tabasco. Let's put a little bit of this on here. So normally, the gazpacho, it could be spicy or it could be mild. Um, this here, just kind of kick it up a little bit. Let's go ahead. Where's the, the, all right, see, look at that. Look how beautiful A lot that of is. color in that. Yeah, it's hot. And it has that nice summer feel, mm -hmm. you know? It, and it's hearty, too. It really is hearty. Um, okay, so I have these cute little glass mugs. Mm -hmm. And then you can just put it in here just like this. Can you see me? Yeah. yeah you can see me. All right, so look. You just put it in here just like this here. And look how hearty that is. It's really, really a hearty soup. And it's not boring either because it has lots of different layers and complexes of flavors. So it's summertime. It's nice and cold for the heat. Could you add like a seafood to that if you wanted to too? Um, no. Okay. I would not. And generally because Cabacho mm. is just like this here. Yeah, yeah you make it mm. you make it just like this. That smells so good. Um I wouldn't add any protein or anything to mm. it. That's just me. Yeah. Um I would try to keep it true to its form. Mm -hmm. And plus I don't want to say because I don't want anyone inboxing me or emailing me telling me that I messed up the cabacho. <laughs> it's bad enough I'm butchering the name. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I'm going to put this in. Okay. All right. That smells good, huh? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so look what I did here. Look at how beautiful this is. Oh, my goodness. Look at this. Look at that. So cute. So cute, huh? So cute. So cute. And it has cute little summer flavors. Okay, so one more thing. Um, you could kind of move it around a mm -hmm. bit, you know, make it look a little prettier. Presentation is everything. Let's give this one a little more cucumber. All right, to the top, you can see that it has cucumber in it. All the spice. So, again, please check. Go to Google. Gazpacho. Check the recipe. Pick out a recipe you like. Inbox me. Email me if you get lost on that recipe. But I will guarantee that this is a beautiful summer treat. So, we have some grilled scallions. Oh. And we just put that on top just like that. You know, don't be picky about it. Yes, I'm using my hands because I washed it. All right, look at that. Beautiful. Look at this. Look how beautiful that is. It's like a cute little bow. Just a cute little bow. Yeah. And so, here you are. If you can see it. We have our cold soup, our capacho. Cold Look at this. Just like that. So cute. All right. So we'll put that over there. So that's our first. That's our summer soup gabacho. So again, tomatoes. I use all tomatoes. All red tomatoes. Hot water. A little salt. Dip the tomatoes in. Take them out. The skin come out. Chop them up. Put them in a bowl. Put them in a refrigerator. Take it out. Add all the goodness and stuff to it. Salted. A little red wine. Mm -hmm. Put it back in the refrigerator. Let it marinate. Pull it out. Then you can add your vegetables to it. In my case, I added red bell pepper and um, English mm -hmm. cucumber cube. And then I grilled a scallion and put it on top. Great summer soup. Yeah, so let's go to our, uh, our next salad. So this salad is a bit rustic. Um... I guess it's an Italian, mm -hmm. uh, Spanish theme today. <laughs> we got the sangria. We got the spacho soup. The next cold salad we're going to do, which is a favorite of mine, is the orzo rice and red roasted mm. potato. Yes, yeah, so this is really super, super, super easy to do. I know I keep saying that, right? And you're going to get tired of me one day saying super, super easy, right? <laughs> All right. So I'm going to put my glove on for this one. So for this one here... The orzo rice. My Ziploc bag. I don't care. I am not ashamed of having my Ziploc bags. Okay? <laughs> you come to my house, you go into my refrigerator, you're going to see a label. <laughs> 
on the side and organized. All right, so here we go. Orzon rice. Go. I um. I like getting mine fresh out the bin from Winco. Mm -hmm. That way, I can control how much that I want to get, mm -hmm. and also it's fresh as yeah. well because it's not packaged. But if you see Orzon rice, you'll see it over where the rice and beans are, uh, where the rice is, the pasta is. It's actually a pasta. What? It's actually a pasta. Wow. Yeah, but we call it rice mm -hmm. because it looks like rice. Yeah, I was like, first I thought it looked like a pasta yeah, a little bit. Yeah, it's actually a pasta. So maybe I should change the comments. But mm -hmm. we actually call it rice because it looks like a rice. This is really easy to make. Hot water, olive oil, salt. Mm. Put it in there. Turn it off. Put a lid on. Let it steep for about five to seven minutes. Strain it. Rinse it. Perfect. It's perfect. You want to cook it al dente because what happened is the steam will steam it up and cook the rest. All right, so again, if you add your olive oil in and your salt, what you're going to do, you are going to season it and also you're going to guarantee that it's not going to come out super sticky, right? So this is wonderful. Look at this here. Look how good this is. All right. The next step to it is what? Roasted potatoes. Yum. <laughs> I'm a potato girl. So if you watch me, you're going to see a lot of potatoes. Red potatoes, real simple. Wash it really good. Wash it good. Cube them. Cube them. Look, cube them. Italian seasoning and olive oil, salt, and pepper. 400 degrees for about 15 minutes. Look at that. Leave the skin on so what we gonna do we gonna mix this together I love red yes we're gonna mix it together now some people they're trying to oop, they're trying to like watch their carbs mm -hmm. they're like oh, i don't know it's too many carbs forget them <laughs> we like a good potato and in this case it's a potato with pasta yes so you can mix this in a bowl if you have i have i don't have a bowl with me but if you have a really really big bowl you could toss this up and make it real nice and beautiful actually i probably could uh, toss it up in my ziploc bag huh i didn't even think about that huh, huh. huh. side pause maybe we should have went to a i know what to eat huh? for your birthday ziploc bags <laughs> This is some ingenuity going on here at the Voice of Stockton, okay? So you can learn a few things with Chef Tobias because this is how you really cater, okay? Mm -hmm. This is what really goes on when you got to cater and make it happen, you know? You use what you have to make it right. Yes, all right, so look at that. That's even better. All right. So then let's put it on here really nice. For it. And it smells so good, huh? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so it's Orzone and red potatoes some people call them new potatoes i call them red potatoes because it's red mm -hmm. <laughs> making a little bit of mess but guess what chef is gonna clean it up because the presentation's everything and then on the potatoes you see the nice little brown mm -hmm. the little brownness on it all right so just mix that up just like this all right so we're almost done after you do that what you want to do is you want to chop your uh, your collard green real thin. See, I julienne fine mm -hmm. mine. Where's my thing? Where's my? Here you go. So I julienne fine my collard green real thin. And um, what you could do is you could blanch them in a little hot water first. Look at this, just like this. Really? Chef's a busy person. I am. Okay. I think I answered it. Okay, so look at how beautiful that is. Look at that. Mm -hmm. And look how that smells. Don't that smell good? And that's organic collard greens, mm -hmm. by the way. Yes. Collard greens usually grow in the winter time. But if you have your own garden, um, sometimes you can find them in the, uh, the greenhouse. So they can make them available year round. All right, look how this got that. Look at this. Isn't this beautiful? Mm -hmm. Look at this. So you have orzone rice with roasted red potato. So you want to roast your potato with um, Italian seasoning, olive oil, salt and pepper, 
and then just uh, put it in the oven for about 400 degrees, about 15 minutes, take it out, set it to the side, do your ozone pasta, which you want to do, hot water, again, a little salt, olive oil, put it in a pot, turn it off, put the lid on, let it steep for about five to seven minutes, okay? Guaranteed, perfect, it'll be a little empty to take with a little bite, but guess what? It's going to steam up mm -hmm. as it's finished um, sitting and finished cooking. Perfect, collard greens right on top. I like collard greens because it's good for you. Mm -hmm. It gives it a nice bright green color and it's easy to get. All right, so our last salad. I do have one more salad, right? I love this salad. <laughs> Again, my Ziploc bag. I don't care. <laughs> Ziploc bag. Yes. This is a broccoli salad. So, if you have a vegetable shredder like I do, or if you have a food processor, let me change my glove. If you have a food processor like I do, or if you have a vegetable shredder, then what you could do is you take the sticks of the broccoli. So the broccoli heads, you could take off and put those in the freezer um, and keep those for later. Mm -hmm. But this here, you use the broccoli sticks, a little cabbage, and some shredded carrots. If you don't have the machine that I have, buy it. It's in the bag. Broccoli salad. It's not hard. And it's fresh. <laughs> a lot of times the deli has broccoli salad too. Mm -hmm. So you could get broccoli salad also at the deli all right so we have broccoli salad yes i just love this all right so let me get my glass right here again it is broccoli stem with shredded carrots and cabbage and it gives it a really pretty color huh mm -hmm. yeah i also use this for coleslaw as well gives it that nice crunch and bite all right so i'm not going to use that much so I'm going to use this here for the base. Yeah, I was actually thinking it looked like coleslaw a little bit. Yeah, it does, huh? All right. And the reason why I like it is because the broccoli stands up. So for the seafood, <laughs> this is what I have. I made this this morning. I have tuna. You could get tuna, really good tuna, depending on your deli. Depending on the grocery store you go to, you could get fresh tuna. Or, if you sometimes you go to Trader Joe's, you could get the imported tuna. The tuna that's imported. Um, or you could get fresh tuna. Um, it is a little pricey, but if you don't get a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and what I did is I mixed it with uh, calamari. Mm -hmm. So I bought calamari steaks and I cubed it. And then what I did is the first thing I did is I sauteed the calamari steaks uh, first. And then I sauteed the, the tuna because you don't want to overcook tuna. It's just a little bit. And then after that, I boiled the shrimp, tossed it all together in a nice little spicy sauce. And boom, guess what you got? A seafood melanie. All right, so look. Add your broccoli salad to that. It's real easy. This is like just a bowl. All you need is some bowls. <laughs> and the thing about this is, let me give you a trick. You can do this stuff a couple days in advance. And you can all, this, this is stuff that you can always have in your house. So you can always have pasta made um, in your house. You can always have potatoes roasted. Just take it out when you need it and just put it together. So if you had a big bowl, I didn't bring a bowl because we're in a small space. And um, I didn't want to bring any dishes I have to wash. Yeah. <laughs> Tell the truth, right? <laughs> All right, so look at this. Where's my camera? Where's my camera? Look at this. Look at that. Oh, my goodness. Look how good it smells. All right. So look. Doesn't it smell wonderful? All right. And look, you can see the shrimp. You can see the tuna. Look at this. Shrimp tuna. Yes, I'm using my Ziploc bag so we don't have to be washing dishes up in here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Look at this. Look how good this is. Oh my goodness. Look how beautiful this is. So this is broccoli salad. Saute your calamari steak. Saute your tuna. Cube your tuna. Saute it. The sauce I use um, you know, I just used a little sriracha, 
Uh, I use uh, the sriracha. There's a mm -hmm. sriracha sauce. You could get the sriracha adobo sauce with a little olive oil and salt and pepper. That's it. It's real simple. Look how beautiful this is. Yeah, Isn't you can beautiful? smell it too. Yes, I hope so. <laughs> look, and look at the cube uh, tuna and the calamari. Mm -hmm. You can see the calamari just right on top, just like that. See how simple that is? Yep. And it's beautiful too. All right. So here we are. Oh, one thing. I forgot my lemon olive oil. I'm addicted to this lemon olive oil from Olive Drop. <laughs> yes, let's just go on top like this here. All right. Okay. All right, so do we have time for one more? Uh, yeah, if you have <laughs> plenty of time. All right, so look at this. I'm excited. Are you excited? Mm -hmm. I think we need, we should have some company, right? Huh? We should <laughs> We don't have any company to share lunch with. I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right, so here we are. Yes, my Ziploc bags, I don't care. All right, so this is a really easy recipe. Okay, make cornbread how you make cornbread. Okay, just make it how you make it. Add a half a cup of flour to it, more. Add a half a cup of sugar to it, more. Add almond flavor vanilla flavor and an extra egg and and real good put it in the little mini muffins and you have yourself an almond cornbread sweet cake i love the uh smell that i love the muffin cornbread yeah, yeah that's how i prefer to have but you it. want to add more flour to it because mm -hmm. you want it to be like a cakey flavor yeah. but you want a little granite of the cornbread mm -hmm. flavor and you know next week we're going to have a special guest that's coming on well, well, yeah, promote yes it. and i am so happy about them that's getting ready to come on and they have been able to take cornbread and turn it into a business and bring it up to a new level so i'm excited about having them on that they're going to give us a whole new twist on what you could do with cornbread all right so these are the almond cornbread sweet cakes so with this here if you have jam you could put jelly in the middle of mm -hmm. them um you could i like a strawberry jam mm -hmm. in the middle of them so i didn't bring the strawberry jam i'm sorry that's okay but you could cut it and put strawberry jam in the middle of them mm -hmm. and then you can put a little whipped cream on it uh, for your friends but if not just do the strawberry jam I'm telling you it'll be a hit all right so we done yeah, yeah. <laughs> I told you it's gonna be super, I know with super, five minutes super, of spare too yes I told you it's gonna be super super easy okay so where's my camera all right let's get everything in the camera so everyone can see what we have all right so we have our gabacho soup yes remember real quick and easy go to google <laughs> i should do a uh real i should do a, a tutorial on how to do that uh tomatoes tomatoes hot water take the skin off add all the goodness to it a little red wine let it marinate overnight bring it back hit it with some uh english cucumbers mm -hmm. red bell pepper and and uh some grilled scallions look at that nice summer soup mm -hmm. and you can serve it cold or you can serve it room temperature as yeah. well yes okay then we have our orzo orzo rice pasta or orzo rice pasta with roasted new potatoes okay <laughs> roasted new potatoes and then we're going to saute the collard greens and put on top just like this right and then we hit it with the little lemon olive oil you know what you could just squeeze the lemon on top with the little olive oil if you don't have that all right look at that look how beautiful that is and then our second salad we have the seafood melanie so remember it's the um it's the uh calamari calamari steak cube it then the tuna, cube the tuna, 
cook the tuna for maybe 30 seconds just kind of run it around in the pan get a little brown all right and then we have our shrimp dip the shrimp in hot water bring it out add the and then you have your broccoli salad if you don't know how to make the broccoli salad you could buy it. it's perfectly okay then after that add your sriracha adobe sauce with olive oil salt and pepper and guess what just just Put it in a bowl. Our next one is our almond cornbread sweet cakes. Make cornbread how you make it a half a cup of extra flour, an extra egg, and an extra half a cup of sugar and almond flavor. I'm telling you, you will love it. And then don't forget our what? Sangria. Oh, here we are. All right, so don't forget our sangria. This was just a really simple version of it. You have your fruits wonderful fruits cube your fruits a little sugar let it sit for about an hour preferably overnight put it in your wine glass then add the red wine on top so mm -hmm. we have it right yeah this is wonderful what what should we call this i don't even know spanish italian little collard green little southern southern spanish southern summer spanish delight oh. <laughs> <laughs> all right so chef tobias cooks all right so before we get out of here i have a few more minutes i want to say when the camera come around mm -hmm. really quick we have some great event we have a great event coming up next week i have a powerhouse guest coming up i am going to announce the guest go on to chef tobias cooks facebook page youtube page instagram page i'm going to announce our guests i'm really really excited about this guest they came to stockton they hit stockton they blew it up and you can check them out at stockton arena arenas yes i'm excited about that also we have an event coming up on saturday but right before we announce that event i just want to say thank you to everyone sending me great love i've had so many wonderful emails and texts and inbox people are encouraging me keep going keep going strong so i do get all of your messages so thank you so much we will be back next week with our very very special guest yes so our event this week uh so saturday uh september or august excuse me 25th uh from 10 a.m to 5 p.m there's a, the first event it's called the function so it's a great community event for uh the free to the public to find information about stockton and it, it's in a positive light so you'll come out and get information from multiple uh vendors out there which will uh, be very fun then uh actually later that night the bedford block party from 6 to 10 p.m at the Art Lab, 2001 Pacific Avenue. And, excuse me, the uh, function is at the Catalyst uh, Real Estate uh, parking lot right across the street from KXVS, uh, 1850 Pacific Avenue, if you want to Google that or uh, Maps that. All right. Thank you, Dustin. Mm -hmm. So go ahead. Go to the voice of Stockton org. Look up those events. Please come in the 25th this weekend. Also, uh, go ahead. Chef Tobias Cooks, Kitchen Conversations, mm -hmm. the voice of Stockton. Catch me on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram. Come on, like, share, share, donate. We'll see you next week. Thank you so much, Chef Tobias Cooks with Kitchen Conversation, the voice of Stockton. Yeah! Da 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 da, Chef Body da do da 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 da, Sha da ba da di di da da da, Sha da la da di da do da da da, Sha da ba da di di da da da, Sha da.